Greetings, music lovers. Welcome to another episode of the Raga Room. Music is the voice of God. Music takes a special place in our hearts when creative expression of an artist blends with sublime lyrics. Great musicians have implicitly believed that their music and their singing was a direct pathway to God. As to the recipient listeners, it is said that divine sound is the cause of all manifestation. The knower of the mystery of sound knows the mystery of the whole universe. Some forms of music are timeless classics. For years, day after day, several South Indian households have experienced their dawns with Venkatesha Supravadams by M. Sama. Her renditions of Vishnu Sahasranamams, Hanuman Chalisa, Govind Ashtakam are a must-listen on a daily basis in several households. M.S. Subalakshmi's music is replete with the feeling of bhakti, a complete surrender to the devotion of God. Following in her footsteps are her great-granddaughters, S. Aishwarya and S. Saundarya. They are the torchbearers of M.S. Subalakshmi and Dr. Radha Vishwanathan's legacy. Aishwarya and her sister, S. Saundarya, are two of the most popular Carnatic musicians from the younger generation. They are the great-granddaughters of Bharata Ratna M.S. Subalakshmi and the granddaughters of Sangeeta Ratnakara, Dr. Radha Vishwanathan, the divine duo that are upholding the MS legacy. With their steadfast determination and mellifluous voice, they continue to enthrall the audience at home and globally. They have several performances, compositions and awards to their credit. Aishwarya began her first lessons from Srimati MS Subalakshmi and Srimati Radha Vishwanathan when she was barely four years old. The huge repertoire of songs which was part of the MS Bani was painstakingly taught to Aishwarya by her grandmother, Dr. Radha, for a period of 20 years. Aishwarya is a disciple of Karnataka Kalashri, Srimati Jambukkannan. She currently learns the Veena from Srimati B. Nagalakshmi. Saundarya is a disciple of Sangeeta Kala Acharya, Srimati Neela Ram Gopal. She learns the Carnatic violin from Sri Vishwajit Mathur. She learns Bharatanatyam from Srimati Sumitra Nitin and also plays the Western violin. Both the sisters learn Hindustani music from Sri Omkarnath Havaldar. In October of 2017, Aishwarya and Saundarya were invited by the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi to sing at his residence wherein they sang the composition Maitreem Bhajata of the Mahaparival of Kanchi which was composed for world peace and sung at the United Nations in 1966 by M.S. Amma and Srimati Radha Vishwanathan. The sisters have given more than 500 concerts in many prestigious venues across the world. It is with great pride and pleasure that I invite Aishwarya and Saundarya to the Raga Room. Atishaya, Akshaya Linga. கண்ணுக்கு தெரியாமல் நிற்கின்றாய் கண்ணா கண்ணுக்கு தெரியாமல் நின்றாலும் எனக்கு குறை ஒன்றும் இல்லை மறைமூர்த்தி கண்ணா வேண்டியதை தந்திட வேங்கடேஷ நின்றிருக்க வேண்டியது மறை மூர்த்தி கண்ணா மணி வண்ணா மலையப்பா கோவிந்தா 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 நமஸ்தே ஐஸ்வர்யா நமஸ்தே சௌந்தர்யா தேங்க் யூ சோ வெரி மச் ஃபார் கமிங் டு த ராகா ரூம் அண்ட் இட் இஸ் பின் மை அப்சல்யூட் பிளேஷர் டு ஹாவ் யூ ஹியர் வித் மீ டுடே நமஸ்தே தீபாஜி குட் மார்னிங் ஹவ் ஆர் யூ I'm doing great. Thank you so much. 
and wish you both a very very happy new year and i'm happy that this is the first recording that we are doing in the new year congratulations on the release of venkatesha uh, supratams which was recently inaugurated by ilya raja sir so many congratulations on that thank you thank you so i just uh, wanted to again you know start with uh, coming from the household of the doyen of carnatic music many many millions of homes start their day with venkatesha suprabhatams kausalya supraja rama purva sandhya pravartate uttishtha narashar dhula kartavyam deiva manhikam kausalya supraja rama purva sandhya pravartate uttishtha narashar dhula kartavyam deiva manhikam uttishtha uttishtha govinda uttishtha garuda dhvaja and also uh, you just released your own version of it uh, recently so for all of us growing up we have grown up listening to ms amma's renditions composition okay. songs but for you come growing up in a household you have grown up experiencing those kind of moments being in the energy of that music the divine music it is a cliched question but how has it been growing up in an atmosphere like this from a very young age both of us have been uh, in a very you know musical environment in our house you know lot of uh, practice when i was small and we were in chennai a uh, lot of uh, my great grandmother and grandmother they used to practice have practice sessions going on because you know at that time they were uh, still performing at very end um and uh, we also ha- used to have a lot of students coming and learning from my grandmother so there was a lot of uh, music you know environment so constantly i was subjected to listening to a lot of music songs so naturally uh, you know we had that uh, impact we were subjected to a lot of music and formally i started uh, training when i was 4 years old my great grandmother and grandmother on vijayadashmi day for us vijayadashmi is very auspicious we started on vijayadashmi day and both of them started their music lessons and same with soundarya she also uh, started learning when she was 4 years old or earlier because i remember when she was 2 and a half or 3 itself she used to sing songs probably little earlier than me <laughs> so because because you know i was also uh, constantly practicing when she was born and you know that had an additional impact on her absolutely you know our dear guru omkaji he was the first one to actually have started uh, the episodes with ragaram so the first thing that he said was shavan samskar so you learn better when you keep listening and somehow it just becomes so solid in your mind and we learning one song for the very first time versus learning something that we have heard over and over again it makes it that much easier right. you can connect with it much sooner and yes. absolutely makes uh, sense when we see you both perform when you and sandarya perform the one thing for me the first time i watched you both sing the first thing that came to my mind was your concentration how your your focus is so strong when you're singing it's as though all your forces are in alignment with your music and there is rightly so also there is a, there's no deviation and people can actually connect with that kind of a focus so what what brings about that kind of focus in your music it is uh, you know basically um responsibility that uh, coming from such a lineage uh, every concert every song which we present you know has to be presented with the utmost perfection and concentration and dedication uh, my uh, a small tip which my father you know my father reviews all the concerts he is there for all the concert every song and as soon as the concert is over uh, we get our feedbacks <laughs> so one feedback uh, or you know suggestion which he gave was that every line every word when you are singing that at that moment you have to concentrate on that particular line or words perfection shuddhi suddham you know all that 
so that uh, really uh, helped us uh, concentrate on while we are singing that song we are into that and also um, knowing the song's meaning and the raga that uh, brings out the bhavam bhavam is the feeling of uh, that particular every raga has a mood so we try to impart that to the audience while we are singing what the composer actually meant while composing that song we try to convey that to the audience so all these factors uh, probably you know <laughs> definitely we have heard that uh, along with vocal training uh, ashwarya you also have been learning violin and sandhya has been learning violin as well as bharatanatyam is that right correct so i learned the veena and uh, sandhya learns violin and bharatanatyam she also learns uh, piano western uh, so in, in violin sandhya learns the western violin and carnatic violin so both of them help uh, complement each other yeah that's about so we are very occupied it's always music <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i think you know also um, i feel when one is learning an instrument the notes become so much stronger when you're also performing vocally right and now um, this confluence of bharatanatyam western and uh, indian classical music with instruments and vocal how does it help with your practice sessions now when you are practicing uh, for a performance or like for in a concert if you're preparing for mm-hmm. something what are those elements from different uh, genres of music or uh, that kind of help you practice better does it really make an impact and how uh while uh, learning the veena right veena or violin so uh, we learn songs which we have learned vocally in the instrument as well in the veena especially certain gamakams gamakas is the you know mean or the oscillation which you you know tell uh, you are exactly able to analyze up to which note you are actually going and coming back so these nuances while you sing uh, help us uh, achieve more perfection vocally same with the violin violin is also a very classical instrument right so some sangadis not from our uh, some songs which we learn on the veena or the violin which we learn vocally that is not uh, vice versa what we learn in the instrument we try to bring it vocally yes. and uh, you know we increase our repertoire so the those sangadis which are meant for the instrument uh, we learn such uh, sangadis and try to implement it so it you know lot of learning happens there uh bharatanatyam is saundarya will explain <laughs> my learning dance with shrimati smitra nathan has helped me understand music better i am able to understand what the composer is trying to express in the song another aspect which uh, i would like to mention is that learning dance uh, has allowed us to add a different um, dimension to our music for example we sang a varnam of uh, shri mutayam bhagavatar in a recent concert and um, in that in the mukta swaram we not only sang the swaram but we also sang the sullukattu which i learned from my dance which usually not many people will sing so so that, uh, while saundarya is learning uh, any dance every line you know is explained several times and um, you know every line the meaning is the same but it is interpreted differently so Absolutely. they have so many repetitions so while she is singing it sir she will you know she will have another uh, very emotive going on about how to express it and all that so it's a completely new dimension dance and uh, music it's a beautiful uh, uh, combination marriage of both and like they say natya shastra says that bhava is the underlying factor of all arts so and that's the thing that connects you to the audience too right i mean we can be very technical in what we do we can be perfect in our rendition whether it is dance or it is music but if we cannot connect with the audience probably people who may not know what is happening the nuances of right. it the technicalities of it that is the medium that connects us to people and i think 
with all, and no one it takes a lot to understand the hard work that goes behind bringing something of that complex nature simplifying it and presenting it to the audience and that comes with practice dedication and discipline okay. and uh, i was reading somewhere about your grandmother dr radha vishwanathan and uh, i was very intrigued by this and she says make it a point to write a diary every day that improves your mm-hmm. memory power so these are all precious gems for people who are listening or watching the show some a uh, wisdom like this that you have learned from your grandmother great grandmother that um, you make it a point to uh, use it in your practice or in your routine daily routine something of that nature if you would like to share with us please my grandmother shrimati radha vishwanathan till you know she taught me she has never referred to any book can you believe it so she used to teach out of her memory wow every sangadi and if you listen to what they have performed in the concert not one note will be here or there it was just uh, you know what she learned she just uh, passed it on so uh, i i used to make uh, take notes and uh, record and sometimes even video record all her sessions because it was so precious correct every moment of learning with her Uh, was so precious so i used to document everything and every um, song she learned uh, had a small anecdote of w- what made them learn that song so i used to make notes of that as well so i always uh, tell soundarya uh, that you know for when you perfect a song so the way she has taught me uh, probably a song which i learned 15 years back i will just be able to teach soundarya without looking at any notes wow. or any referee wow. no taking you know looking at the lyrics on google or no having a notebook that was the way of teaching you know in fact uh, she would not encourage recordings she would say if you did not uh, understand any sangadi you come back to me i will teach you again <laughs> but i could not uh, take a chance and not record you know something so precious so it was like the gurukulam way of learning with my grandmother suppose in a monday to friday i practice go for practice or classes with her i cannot even say class i just used to call it practice so suppose we learn uh, i was a very fast learner so in a week i would learn around 5 6 songs <laughs> <laughs> wow so out of 5 days i would learn five songs so on all the five days i would learn you know on the first day if i learned two songs up to the fifth day those two songs will keep continue you know she would continue teaching me it was not that i recorded it practiced and went and you know just sang it in front of her mm-hmm. the next day and uh, no it was not like that so i i tell soundarya that you know when you learn a song think of it like you're reading a book and you know putting it into the library whenever i ask you to sing that song it has to be taken out from the bookshelf and neatly presented you should not be able you know uh, if i have to present the song you know i have to refer to the recording or look at the notes this sangadi i don't know no nothing of that sort you have to perfect it at that moment and archive it it archive in the memory <laughs> so at any wow. time pull it out and you should be able to present it for many years extract so, it from the database of your mind and please we are capable of human brain you, you it's capable of so much of memory power so uh, we have to make use of it <laughs> and we fall prey to what is easy because we know something is available we can put it somewhere in a digital archive and get it when we want so we just use yes. that root even though we know this is available to us but that is really see, wonderful see, having a digital archive and uh, documenting i i would say that's uh, it is necessary you know for us for a future reference but personally if you can do this and save it up in your memory that digital archive should be used only in case you have any doubt or you know anything of that sort otherwise probably for the future generation oh our you know soundarya and aishwarya have practiced like this <laughs> something like but that but you know aishwarya as you're saying this i can see that your future is really shining very very bright because when your foundation is so solid 
and your uh, your systems are so correctly in place and you know how to use the traditional knowledge systems in combination with technology i mean this is a perfect blend for the best music to come out there so really amazing and i've always been very curious and i want to get to that as well so uh, predominantly you have been learning the carnatic style of music but you have also under the tutelage of uh, pandit havaldar and omkar havaldar you have been learning hindustani music as well so how did that happen how did you um, also want to explore hindustani music my uh, great grandmother and grandmother have been students of hindustani music so uh, and they have in their repertoire they have sung a lot of hindustani bhajans meera bhajan and uh, i have always wanted to learn hindustani uh, music um, you know to uh, for voice culture that's what it is uh, uh, you know carnatic music musician learns hindustani uh, primarily for voice culture but uh, uh, in 2014 uh, when my father uh, uh, spoke to havaldar sir uh, he was very you know happy and uh, welcomed us with you know i was very skeptical of uh, to learn hindustani i was very scared because uh, almost uh, 17 years of at that time in 2014 17 years of learning carnatic music i didn't know whether i would uh, do justice to this great art form but uh, both uh, omkar ji and uh, nagraj sir have made both of us so comfortable that uh, it be- at one point it became beyond voice culture we wanted to explore more of the rag ragam and uh, we don't look at it uh, uh, f- uh, learning hindustani to perform we are just still students of hindustani music we want to learn more and more and uh, increase our knowledge completely for expanding our knowledge without uh, we don't have a, you know we don't want to uh, perform fast or learn fast we don't have any such uh, you know goal set it is purely to ex- uh, learn and increase our knowledge um you know compare the similar ragams you know what are the similarities what is different in ragas which are having the same arohanam avarohanam in hindustani and carnatic it has been a wonderful journey of uh, <laughs> you know learning hindustani we look forward to learning so much more from <laughs> both of them it's a very immersive experience right so um, when i have my class with omkar ji too for the first 15 minutes i mean like uh, i just learn it for the love of learning again it's not like i want to perform but uh, if i just can follow his alap that's good enough for me like if he's saying something just listen to it because there is such beauty in his voice and the manifestation of how he is as a person comes out in his voice and that is such a beautiful feeling for 15 minutes i just follow him it's not like i have to do something to it my peace of mind stays in the fact that i'm following his alaps that's good enough it's a very beautiful experience and uh, leading to uh, uh, during omkar ji's sessions uh you get so inspired by the way he sings you know it is just him singing a sa oh i want to sing like that that is the impact of his sessions oh can i not sing like that what should i practice to attain that perfection that is the level of inspiration he passes on to his uh, during his classes you know so every moment of uh, the class we not only enjoy and you know learn different aspects of the uh, raga we are doing that day but every sangadi he you know oh can i not sing like that that feeling is always there <laughs> and he's such an encouraging person he makes yes. you feel good about yourself when you're singing so i mean you both are at, at the very top level but even for people like myself i come back feeling like yeah maybe i can do it <laughs> you know so <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> that is that is one of the nicest things about him leading to the astounding success of bhavani oh my god uh everything about that video is just perfect like starting from i like how you both coordinate your attire so beautifully very complimenting 
and it's very aesthetic the way it is filmed is very aesthetic and the way you have performed the way you have rendered that composition the tans in such such technicality and get at the same time perfection and still exuding so much of bhava it was you can easily listen to it on a loop for so many times such a beautiful a uh, video and you have also received appreciation accolades from many people including lata didi also on this so to take us through your experience on this uh, video please bhavani jagat janani gagari sa sari ga ma dani sari gari sa ni da ma ma da ma gari sa bhavani jagat janani gagari sa ni da ma gari sa gari sa ni da ma ma gari sa ni sa bhavani jagat janani dani da 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 dani ma 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 dani da da gari sa ni da ma ma gari sa ni gari ri 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 gari ri 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 gari ri da ma gari sa ni da ma gari ga ma da 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 gari ga ga gari ga ma ma gari sa ni da ma ma gari sa bhavani jagat janani bhavani ah uh, see this uh, uh, bhavani project uh, was actually uh, uh, conceived last year so we worked on it almost uh, for a year and you won't believe that uh, <laughs> we had uh, you know there were a lot of ideas coming and due to corona we could not uh, even though it was conceived last year uh, we had couple of sessions and uh, we could not go you know record it in the studio a lot of and at that time it was at its peak we were very scared to go and record so this year again uh, i omkar ji saundarya and i said no we have to you know complete this project and um, you won't believe we just had two sessions in person wow everything else was online one day me saundarya went to omkar ji's house another day uh, omkar ji and uh, sharda ji came home and uh, so how how we went about it is you, you know about uh, <laughs> omkar ji as we are as we develop he will reciprocate so it's not like you know uh, this is what you are going to sing no it's not like that he will allow you to uh, explore the raga and you have to give him ideas and he will re- reciprocate his is a massive uh, imagination but for that you have to you know <laughs> compliment what his level of uh, <laughs> thoughts so for us it was very challenging because uh, uh every session we would also sing for him and he would give us ideas we would work on it you know make uh, uh, notes and uh, what to do what not to do uh, to make it sound as hindustani as possible you know so um this was the practice of the bhavani uh, video dressing complimentary <laughs> that has proved uh, a lot during this uh, one year <laughs> oh you so you now we have a lot of uh, ideas of uh, we always uh, stick to being very it comes naturally we don't uh, there is no compulsion to be traditional we are always like that so it is it's just uh, how we are so uh, so, <laughs> so and the next yeah even even the so saundarya and i if i look up at you know something some nice necklace i will send it to her and i will say see do you like this she will say no no it's okay look for some other design <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty of having sisters right <laughs> yeah same thing with the sari selection also sari selection uh, my mom will also be um, involved Our Instagram chat only has sarees and necklace pictures. <laughs> so uh, she will say, "I like this." I will say, "No, probably something, you know, little more uh, nice or color." So fine tune it together. We make uh, we don't spend much time. It all goes into Instagram chats or WhatsApp chats. <laughs> we don't discuss in person. In in person, it's, it's always only for, only for music or uh, other things. <laughs> But you both blend everything together so beautifully, and as much as it is, it is also so important to present it. Also, right? So that's great. Ah, uh, Bhavani is one of the projects. Yes, but you have also worked on several. what are some of those compositions or projects that you connect with very deeply 
some very fond memories and why you know like or it could be like in the legacy of your grandmother and great grandmother some composition that you that touches you more than the others and why I, what is your reasoning behind see for for us every composition is very special um what we learned from our grandmother uh, i have spent lot of time with my grandmother so for me uh, every composition i am emotionally connected because she would have told some story or the efforts which she put in in spite of her illness to pass on she was she always had the sense of responsibility she would not want me to miss even a single day of practice she'll say see see today you have not come today's gone that's all she will say but you she will make you feel <laughs> so bad and bad bad about it, it. <laughs> <laughs> see today is gone you will not get it back that's all she would say so there is one um, song rama simara a guru nanak shabad so in that chinna uh, chinna kari gayo gayo kal te se jaat aaj hai it's gone see today is gone so she will tell you see you day you came late that 15 minutes is gone so uh, every composition and every line or every song which she taught is so precious um out of which uh, all the bhajans bhajan she had a very special connection to all the bhajans uh, my grandmother so we, uh, i like madhuvan uh, tumukyo in madhuvanti and uh, her favorite rag was desh So uh-huh. any Desh composition reminds me of my grandmother. There are a lot of Hari Me To La Khaya Samira Bajan and Tu Da Yal. That's Sur Das Bajan. You know these um, uh, these particular compositions classically. Uh, see every composition both of them sang. They set high standards. Okay. so uh some uh, favorite uh, classical compositions uh, you know the shyama shastri's uh, swarajatis are very special because my grandmother used to sing in the higher octave mm-hmm. and great grandmother used to sing in the lower octave so mm-hmm. that was uh, we those compositions are very special to us so yeah <laughs> so wonderful see these are the things that we can actually listen to it all day these uh, anecdotes or your experiences you know because that's such a wealth of knowledge there and uh, the one composition that was applauded and in 1966 when ms samma and your grandmother sang maitrim bhajata akila rajitrim the in the united nation maitri bhajata akhilak jetri maitri bhajata akhilak jetri atma vadeva parana vipashyata atma vadeva parana vipashyata yuddham tyajata and that uh, the the lyrical value of it is so valuable and i think that kind of symbolizes how music can bring the world together and every time you listen to it you tear up because the i mean every one of the compositions were like that but in particular and uh, this was also one composition that you both very lovingly performed in front of uh, prime minister narendra modi ji so tell us about your experience with that maitri bhajata akila hrjetri maitri bhajata akila hrjetri janani prithvi kam dukha se janani prithvi kam dukha see for the centenary year of my grand great grandmother uh, we had gone to uh, delhi to release the 100 rupee coin 
so in the morning the function you know there was this function with the honorable vice president we got a call you know from the office of the honorable prime minister to visit and uh, we uh, we did not expect <laughs> you know so, so all this would happen it just happened on that day as soon as he went we went there um he welcomed us very warmly he said suswagatam in sanskrit welcome so and then um, we spent around uh, 30 minutes at his office and uh, he was uh, very appreciative of both of us upholding the legacy of uh, you know my um, ms uh, and radha and uh, he um, asked us to continue to practice and take forward the legacy so he was very uh, appreciative of that he said why don't you you know sing something we quickly you know practiced uh, took the shruti and we sang uh, <laughs> maitrim vajata that became very appropriate for that occasion yeah. and uh, since we we didn't want to take up too much time so maitrim vajata was a very short composition <laughs> so that was uh, how it happened and uh, unforgettable moments to have you know met the <laughs> prime minister and sung in front of him we did not expect him to you know tweet it and uh, put it on his social media that was absolutely a big surprise <laughs> wow i mean i really really with all my heart this is uh, something that you will see so much more you know growing up in your future with your experiences i'm sure there will be several other beautiful moments like this and all of that is sort of leading to your discipline your practice your the legacy that you carry and very rightly that you said that you have the responsibility of carrying this legacy something that one cannot take very easily you are doing everything your due diligence to make sure that you're upholding the values and traditions and no wonder success is going to follow you wherever you where you both go and uh, if i may ask uh, if you could sing a few lines of maitri bhajan oh yes oh yes thank you maitri bhajata akila rajate maitri bhajata अखिल हृदय तुम्हे मैत्री भजत अखिल हृदय त्रिये आत्मा देव परार पी पश्यत आत्मा देव परार पी पश्यत युद्ध त्यजत स्पर्धा त्यजत युद्धम त्यजत स्पर्धा त्यजत त्यजत परेश्वक्रमक्रमण त्यजत परेश्वक्रमक्रमण मैत्री भजत अखिल जेत्री मैत्री भजत akila hai jeetri wow so beautiful like you can just close your eyes and get lost in the music so immersive <laughs> thank you so very very much and uh, i i'm sending all the best energies and all the best to your all your music endeavors and may god bless you with more and more and may you continue to bring the world closer with your music with your divinity and your with all the best that is going on and as we just spoke about i hope that covid gets behind us and you're able to travel more spread the joy of your mu- music all over the world and uh, may you reach the pinnacle of success and thank you so very much for coming to the naga room and i cannot tell you how thank happy thank you deepaji thank you so much it was wonderful having you know uh, having this conversation with you we look thank forward you. to meeting you in person <laughs> once covid gets behind us <laughs> absolutely i will come to chennai and personally meet you we are in bangalore <laughs> I'm sorry yes okay <laughs> much easier it's my hometown too 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Thank you much. so I much. Wish you so much. Ashwarya and Sandhya. Thank you so much. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, wasn't that divine? Thank you so very much, dear viewers, for joining us on this episode of the Raga Room. We hope to see you in our upcoming episodes where the soul listens as notes speak. For more information, please visit our website www.theragaroom.com. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.